this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about embryonic development of cheek heart. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So first of all, the origin of embryonic cheek heart. Uh, so among various organ systems, vascular system is the first organ system that is developed in any vertebrate embryo uh, but it is not really surprising right because in a developing embryo all tissues and organs require oxygen which is required to be supplied and the vascular system which consists of hard blood vessels and blood cells actually does that job. This system provides oxygen to all developing organs and the heart is mainly formed by mesodermal tissue. In pre-gastrular stages that means before gastrulation some prospective heart cells are localized in buds. During gastrulation, these pre-cardiac cells, that means these future heart cells can pass through the primitive streak. So this is the primitive streak. And uh, what is primitive streak? So primitive streak is nothing but a midline that extends through the middle part of the embryo. So during gastrulation some precardiac cells pass through this primitive streak. And at about 24 hours of incubation in cheek embryo, the coelom that is present in each side of this primitive streak. So here also one coelom is present, here also coelom is present. So that coelom that is present on each side of the primitive streak, it undergoes dilation. Dilation means swelling. So you can see that this part is swelling. This is swollen part. So that coelom is undergoing dilation and gradually it pushes in like that in this part it is pushing so it pushes in from its side towards the midline or you can say toward the primitive streak and it forms this part that is the amniocardial vesicle so the amniocardial vesicle is formed from the coelom it is present in both side of the primitive streak and the mesodermal tissue that is present beneath this amniocardial vesicle that is this part. So this part that is present beneath this amniocardial vesicle on its side it undergoes thickening and these thickenings are called primordial epimyocardium. So this is the thick part you can see from this picture and this is called primordial epimyocardium and they are destined to form the external coat of the heart that is the future epicardium and the middle part of the heart middle layer of the heart that is called myocardium. So epicardium and myocardium would be formed from this primordial epimyocardium that is the thickened portion that is present beneath the amniocardial vesicle. Now some cells detach from the primordial epimyocardium these cells. These cells are detached from this primordial epimyocardium and they aggregate loosely between this primordial epimyocardium and the 
adjacent endoderm so this is the endoderm part and some cells are present here which are detached from this primordial epimyocardium and they are present between these endoderm and the primordial epimyocardium so these are some loose cells and these loose cells are called primordial endocardial cells primordial endocardial cells and these cells are destined to form the endocardium that is the inner layer of heart so heart has three layers the outer layer is epicardium middle layer is myocardium and the inner layer is endocardium so all of the three layers are now formed now after some time these primordial endocardial cells they arrange themselves to produce a pair of you can see two thin wall tubes this is one tube this is another tube and eventually the paired endocardial tubes they come close together like this and finally you can see these two tubes get fused into a single tube and this tube is uh, found in the midline of the embryo now at about 30 hours of incubation in chick embryo fusion of the truncus and ventricle take place but still you can see that atrium and sinus venosus remain unfused right because you can see pair of atrium and pair of sinus venosus at 30 hour of embryo and the truncus this is the truncus it actually it forms the aorta in future and the atrium and ventricles are uh, different chambers of cheek heart and the sinus venosus is also a chamber it basically collects venous blood and delivers it to the atrium now at about 48 hours of uh, incubation fusion of the atrium and sinus venosus take place so now atrium and sinus venosus are also fused now uh, next is the bending of heart and establishment of its regional divisions so at the end of the second day and during the third day of incubation the early heart undergoes a change in shape so this is the early heart now it undergoes a change in shape like it, it the, its shape is like straight tubular so it changes its shape from the straight tubular form to the a shaped configuration so the shape of this heart is like a shape now the primitive uh, ventricle bends to the right you can see the ventricle is now bending toward right and the atrium travels upward above the ventricle and a prominent median furrow that is the ventricular septum appears and the atrium and ventricle are divided into right and left side so right atrium left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle are now formed the heart of chick embryo starts beating very early like at its 29 hours of incubation in its development but why because of the metabolic requirement at the end of the fourth day an interatrial septum develops between the right and left atrium here one septum will be developed that is called interatrial septum and at the same time an interventricular septum also develops between the right and left ventricle so interatrial septum and interventricular septum will be formed now at about seventh day a pulmonary trunk develops which unites with the right ventricle right this is the right ventricle so the pulmonary trunk is developed which will unite with the right ventricle 
and a systemic trunk also develops which is continuous with the left ventricle. Valves of the heart. So, valves of the heart start forming. So, there are four types of valves mainly found in chick heart. So, first is the semilunar valve. So, semilunar valve appears at the base of systemic trunk. So, this red valve is the semilunar valve that is present at the base of the systemic trunk. That means it is present between the systemic trunk and left ventricle. And this valve prevents the backflow of blood from the systemic trunk into the left ventricle. That is the purpose of valve, right? To prevent the black backflow of blood. And one more semilunar valve is present at the base of pulmonary trunk. So, this is one more semilunar valve. It is present at the base of pulmonary trunk. That means it is present between pulmonary trunk and the right ventricle. This valve prevents the backflow of blood from the pulmonary trunk into the right ventricle. The auriculoventricular valve appears between the right atrium and right ventricle. So, this is the auriculoventricular valve. And this valve prevents the backflow of blood from the right ventricle to the right atrium. Bicuspid valve is present between the left atrium and left ventricle. So, this is the bicuspid valve. This valve prevents the backflow of blood from the left ventricle into the left atrium. So, this is all about embryonic development of Cheek heart.